there are three types of hazards which a pipeline design may face. These are structural hazards, data hazard and control hazards. We started with the design where by uh, the process of design itself, we took care of structural hazards. That means enough resources were introduced so that there are no structural hazards. Uh, but the problem of data hazard and control hazard is still there in the design we have talked of. Uh, today we will see how to handle data hazards in particular. Initially we will see that uh, how we can introduce no ops or bubbles in the pipeline so that uh, the, the functionality remains correct and then we will try to introduce techniques of uh, data forwarding and improve the situation. So, uh, first we will examine uh, the question of uh, stalling the pipeline in detail uh, for different types of instructions sequences what is the number of stall cycles required and at which instant or in which cycle do we need to introduce a stall. Uh, we will see what additional control circuitry is required to actually cause these stalls to be introduced. Uh, then we will define the conditions which needs to be detected in order to uh, exercise this control. Uh, after having done that, we will talk of uh, data forwarding. So, that that is a technique where you sort of bypass the register file and uh, pass on the data from one instruction to other instruction uh, as early as possible. So, that requires additional paths, we will see what these are. Uh, once you introduce additional paths, you need additional control and that is what we will see next. Uh, finally, we will see that uh, in spite of introducing data forwarding, you may sometime need to stall. So, under those cases how stalling is done. Okay, so, here is the uh, pipeline data path which we had designed in the previous lectures okay, and you would recollect that all we had done was taken single cycle data path and introduced interstage registers. And uh, uh, after introducing controls, this is how things looked you have data path and control which is much the same as single cycle uh, control, but again we make the control signal pass through uh, the, the interstage registers, so that uh, uh, they, they are applicable at the right time. Okay. Now, uh, let us look at the issue of uh, stalling when uh, you find a pair of instruction which are data dependent. So, Suppose you have an instruction which you are calling ith instruction which is a load instruction storing something in T 1 and immediately an add instruction follows which is trying to read T 1. So, uh, we had earlier seen that this instruction which is following load uh, instruction i plus 1 uh, would be able to begin with delay of 2 cycles okay. and the picture which I had shown earlier was this where we said that. Uh, uh, this cycle goes waste and this cycle goes waste and this instruction starts after a delay of 2. So, that register read for second instruction and register write for the first instruction happen in the same cycle. Uh, this makes sense when reading and writing of register file is being done in a single cycle. First half of the cycle you write, second half of the cycle you read. In that case, the value which is being written let us say in middle of the cycle here is getting read in this and uh, the data is correctly forwarded, but uh, th this picture is not quite correct because what will happen is that in in this cycle remember that in this the horizontal axis is the time axis. So, in, in this cycle uh, instruction uh, i plus 1 will get fetched. Okay. So, i m cycle will get complete and uh, it is the next cycle which will get actually held up. So, the correct picture is to show like this that i m this i plus 1 instruction is in the uh, fetch stage here, okay. it is in the instruction memory. Uh, then the next cycle what one would expect is r f cycle, but uh, it cannot read correct values here. So, it is this we want to uh, prolong. So, this instruction would remain in r f stage for 3 cycles and it is only the last or the third one which will be fruitful where actually you will read values and proceed further. Okay. So, so, this is the way uh, you will actually implement uh, delaying of the instruction. So, it is somewhere in the middle you need to delay, you, you got the instruction in the pipeline, you notice that you cannot proceed forward, you get stuck at R f stage 
uh, this instruction stays there at that stage and uh, then two cycle later it, it proceeds normally. So, now uh, we can view the same thing uh, you remember that uh, we discussed that pipeline can be seen in two different views in one you show instruction by instruction okay, and uh, have horizontal axis indicating the time. So, for each instruction you could show which stages it is passing through in different cycles. The other approach is to uh, show all stages and uh, have the time uh, time time shot uh, snapshots of uh, the pipeline in different uh, clock cycles shown one after another vertically. So, if you do that uh, this is the picture which will emerge and it will throw more light into what is happening in the pipeline. So, these are the five stages and uh, what we say here is that at time t in cycle t let us say the instruction i is here in the ALU stage. Okay. Then uh, clearly uh, i minus 1 and i minus 2 the previous instruction have gone ahead they are here. i plus 1 instruction which is our add instruction that is where the trouble is it has reached this point it has reached r f and i plus 2 has reached i m now. So, from uh, this cycle we will trace what happens in subsequent cycles. So, uh, you would also notice that I have not shaded these two because these these uh, stages or these cycles of instruction i plus 1 and i plus 2 will not be able to complete and these two instruction will remain stuck. So, it is remember that it is not only i plus 1 which gets stuck for two cycles it is the one which is following. So, everyone behind the uh, instruction in the queue uh, gets held up. Okay, now, since in t plus 1 this instruction is not able to move forward we have to introduce a no op no op means no operation it is a null instruction which uh, does nothing okay. and I have not shown ALU shaded which means that uh, instruction is here, but actually it is not utilizing anything it is just uh, occupying a cycle. We go to next cycle uh, I, this is still not able to proceed okay. so uh, uh, third cycle will be spent by uh, instruction i plus 1 within r f stage and here it will culminate it will complete here. So, another no op gets introduced here because this no op moves forward uh, there is no no nothing stopping that that moves forward and you introduce another no op here okay. uh, and i plus 1 i plus 2 are stuck there, but now this time they will complete and then move forward. So, i plus 1 will move to ALU stage here because here it has got the operands and uh, behind it other instruction will also follow. Okay. So, so now effectively what has happened is that in this pipeline two bubbles have come. Okay. So, let us say fluid was flowing and there is uh, some air bubble uh, which is uh, indicating no activity and of course, with time this will get uh, passed out. So, uh, we, we therefore, need to uh, be sure how to introduce these two no operations at the correct time instant uh, th th that is crucial. With uh, this understanding, let us go back to the instruction wise diagram and, and see more accurately what is happening. So, uh, instruction i was like this okay, and in instruction i plus 1 we had introduced uh, these two inactive stages I mean uh, instruction is still in r f, but not doing anything here. Uh, in between we have no op 1 and no op 2, two no ops introduced uh, which do not go through fetch stage. Okay no operations get introduced from ALU stage onwards. Okay, they are not being fetched from memory and they are not going through RF stage, but they get introduced from ALU onward and then move forward. So, no op 1 uh, has uh, this profile, no op 2 has this profile, uh, then i plus 1, i plus 2. So, i plus 1 you would notice is getting stuck at i m for 3 cycles. So, now uh, what is happening? Uh, basically, we need to check if an instruction which has reached uh, RF stage it can proceed forward or not. Okay. If it cannot proceed uh, further then we need to introduce a no operation and uh, this condition we, we will work out a condition if this condition is uh, true for one cycle one no op gets introduced if this condition persists for two cycles then two no ops gets introduced. Okay. So, now uh, let us look at this uh, design where you have data path and control. Okay, it is same thing I might have uh, rerouted some wires uh, 
ju just for sake of clarity of the diagram. <coughs> so, now uh, where is it how, how do we introduce no operation and how do we uh, prevent an instruction from moving forward. <coughs> so, uh, we have this register and uh, here is PC. So, if you do not clock this register, if you do not put in new information in this, then uh, whatever is here in this stage does not change. Okay. So, let us say in some cycle instruction was fetched brought into this register. If you do not change it for another cycle, uh, this instruction which is here remains as it is, okay. it does not move forward. And similarly, if you do not uh, uh, update PC, okay, uh, new instruction does not get fetched, okay. uh, PC also remains stuck with the old value. So, we had not explicitly shown control signals for these two registers, but now to take care of uh, stalling, we need to uh, define control signals for these which may be turned on or off depending upon what is the requirement. Uh, secondly, uh, in order to introduce a null instruction or no operation instruction, uh, we could load all 0 control signals, all null control signals into this register. See, remember that uh, control signal which are applicable for su subsequent stages uh, get stored in this register for a cycle, then some of them get stored in this register for another cycle and then so on. So, uh, we assuming that we have defined our control signal such that 0 always means inactive situation. Okay. Uh, so, we have put a multiplexer here through which controls are passing. So, there are some 6, 7 or whatever number is uh, all those are going as one input of the multiplexer other input of the multiplexer has all zeros. So, depending upon how we select this multiplexer either these control signals get passed on or all 0 values get passed on. So, for introducing a bubble or a no op all we need to do is this uh, control signal which we are calling as bubble needs to be made 1. So, when you make it 1 then effectively you have introduced a no operation no op instruction in the E x stage. Okay. Uh, so, so, now basically uh, to uh, take care of the situation which we had just uh, illustrated. Uh, if we make P C write as 0, I F I D register write as 0 and make bubble as 1, okay. uh, this combination of control will achieve the desired effect. Right? Uh, what we need next is to figure out when do we do this. Okay. We need to detect that condition, we need to basically detect the dependency between two instructions at the right time. So, here is the condition which you need to check to know that there is a hazard. So, first first of all stating this condition words what we need to do is instruction which is an R f stage if that reads from a register in which the instruction the ALU stage or DM stage is going to write. Okay. Uh, so, so, we we look at instruction which is sitting in the R f stage we also look at the instruction which are sitting in E x stage and DM stage see where these instructions are going to write and see where this instruction is going to read from. If there is a match then there is a hazard condition. So, now uh, this suppose uh, at some point of time there was a hazard between instruction uh, in R f stage and A L u stage okay. uh, that will cause instruction R f stage to be held back instruction A l u stage will proceed to D m stage and we will still see a hazard condition that means, we, we are still waiting for that instruction to move forward and write. So, so, this con condition will persist for 2 cycles and uh, 2 no ops will be introduced. The, the second instruction which is dependent will get delayed by 2 cycles, uh, but suppose we uh, notice the hazard only when an instruction is in this stage. Uh, no, I am sorry in, in, in this case you will always first see it here and then here. So, actually uh, the, the way we have described. Uh, in this there will always be two cycles introduced because any instruction on which something is depending will pass through this stage and this stage and uh, on two occasions you will see this condition. Okay, now, how do you uh, precisely check these conditions? Uh, uh, I am introducing some notation here, uh, there is register name, okay, this is the interest stage register and uh, followed following the dot there is name of the control signal. 
Okay. So, what we are saying is that uh, instruction uh, which is stored in this register i d e x. So, that means instruction is actually in e x stage. Okay. Instruction in e x stage has this r d r w signal active that means, it is an instruction which is going to write into register file. Okay. It could be a load instruction, it could be a r class instruction and one of these two condition is satisfied this or this and this is where we are comparing the register addresses. So, we are comparing r s address in i f i d that means, the instruction which is in r f stage has a source register which matches with r d uh, specification of instruction which is in the ALU stage. Okay. Or uh, this destination is matching R t. So, one of the two may be matching uh, the destination here is matching with R s or R t. Or the second part of the condition we instead of I d I x we check with E x d m. So, that is instruction sitting in the uh, d m stage. Okay. So, if that instruction intends to write and there is a match in the uh, source and destination register. Now, uh, there is one uh, little catch here is that uh, we, we are we are trying to make sure that the instruction which is ahead is going to write, but we have not really put the condition which says that instruction which is behind actually reads the registers, because we, we know that some instructions like jump do not read the registers. Okay. So, there, there is no point in trying to hold back a jump instruction. Uh, so, so, therefore, this condition needs to be uh, refined little bit, so that you, you check it only if the instruction uh, actually reads the registers. So, uh, there are some instruction which will read only R s, but not R t. Right? So, so we, we need to uh, take care of those, uh, but, but I am omitting those details. Okay? So, uh, if uh, there are two conditions which, which are corresponding to two parts of this condition. Another point which must be noticed is that when we are looking at uh, R D field in the instruction uh, here, uh, this one or this one, uh, we uh, we are assuming that uh, two alternative destination addresses have been multiplexed. So what I mean here is that uh, these two addresses are multiplexed here, and then we are checking it here or we are checking it there. Okay. Uh, for some reason, suppose you had placed this multiplexer somewhere else, you, you, you can do that logically, it, it will have influence in terms of number of register bits and uh, clock cycle and so on, but uh, technically it is possible. Then in that case, you need to check with both, okay. but uh, advantage of having multiplex is showing up here also that we need to check only one field here or there, I am sorry uh, this one, this one or this one or this one or this one. Okay. So, so this is the condition uh, which needs to be checked and once this condition is true, we need to set those uh, uh, I f i d write signal, p c write signal and bubble signal. Any, any question on this? Okay. So, basically this is uh, some combinational logic uh, which w should be considered as part of the control. Okay. Now, uh, this is a simple solution when you do not have data forwarding paths. So, you are always introducing two cycles of delay if there is a, a dependence between two consecutive instructions. Yeah, I think there is a situation where uh, the, the delay introduced will be one cycle. Uh, this is if uh, the, the two dependent instructions are separated by one more instruction in between. So, so in that case, uh, this match would occur when the earlier instruction is reached dm stage and the one behind is in the rf stage okay so, uh, when the first instruction is alu stage then uh, it will not find any conflict there so so there could be situations where you introduce only one cycle okay now let's look at the data forwarding techniques uh, as you recall that idea here is that as soon as a result is generated we pass on to uh, any following instruction if it requires it and we try to do it as early as possible. So, th there are various scenarios, I am going to repeat those slides, 
So, suppose there is a add instruction following an add instruction, then the result of first is available out at the output of ALU and it needs to be sent to the second instruction at the input of ALU. So, that is one possible path, uh, I am calling this P1. Uh, this path, there could be actually it means two paths leading to this input and another one to that input. So, uh, we, we will actually require both. Uh, another possibility is that a load instruction is followed by a dependent instruction like add. So, in this case the data needs to be forwarded from DM stage to ALU stage and here you still need one cycle delay. Again the, this is not correct actually, uh, we should show IM as a solid thing and uh, RF as a dotted one here. Uh, yet another possibility is that you have add instruction followed by a store instruction. Uh, particularly when see store instruction uh, requires two registers, uh, one register uh, has to be read in the third uh, in uh, is required actually both are normally they are read in second cycle in RF stage, uh, but actual requirement of the value uh, is in ALU stage for one of the registers and in uh, DM stage for another register. The value which has which is to be written in uh, memory is actually required in fourth cycle. So, we are talking of that dependency where uh, the data coming out of ALU is required in this. Okay. So, now uh, we, we do not pass directly from ALU to DM because uh, that, uh, that, that is no longer available, that value would have moved to next stage. Okay. So, we will have to tap it after the DM stage and get it to input of the DM. And fourth possibility is that you have load followed by a store. So, output of DM goes to DM. So, so now these uh, we uh, we have these paths. Okay, uh, this uh, slide actually summarizes all of them. You have P1, P2, and I'm looking at P3, P4 together. So, P1 goes from ALU output, uh, strictly speaking, from the output of EX DM register to ALU input 1 or 2. Then P2 goes from uh, <coughs> out, uh, it is basically output of DM or ALU. Okay. Uh, we have to tap it from DM WB register and send it to ALU input 1 or 2. Okay. So, uh, why I am saying output of DM or ALU is because uh, Okay, uh, well, it is uh, uh, because we will actually uh, try to tap all these uh, after the multiplexer. Okay, Af uh, basically, uh, there is a DMWB register, after that, uh, we have a multiplexer which will uh, look at two possibilities and we will take it from there and take it to the input of ALU input 1 or 2. And then uh, from the same multiplexer, we take it to DM input. So, uh, I have uh, taken part of the data path, okay, augmented with these forwarding paths and uh, shown here. So, so let us let's identify these paths. Uh, P1 is here, this is P1 from output of ALU, uh, we are not taking from here, we are taking after the register we are taking it to uh, two inputs of ALU. So, you notice that there are additional multiplexer which have been introduced. Okay. The normal input is 0, okay, which is either coming from uh, register file through this register okay, or from register file uh, through this register or the offset. One of these two gets selected and coming as the normal input. So, uh, input labeled as 1 are those which are part of P 1. Okay. So, so, this output is available here and there <coughs> okay. depending upon where you need or maybe you need at both places. Right. You, you could have an instruction which is trying to 
add uh, you, you might say add a comma b comma b so that b may be dependent and it's required both the input so you may have situation where uh, you may pass on same thing on both the cases uh, then p2 is this that we are taking from this multiplexer output of this is normally going to register file okay uh, we are bringing a copy here at input 2 so this is p2 for p3 which is from dm to dm we have introduced a multiplexer here the normal path is which is coming from register file okay and uh, this forwarding path is that a copy of this is brought here so now we require three control signals forward a forward b and forward c right and we need to work out conditions uh, which will activate these or which will give proper value to these signals so forward a is actually two bit signal okay but symbolically we will say that it has a value 0 1 or 2 similarly forward b and forward c will have only one of the two values <coughs> okay is this clear uh, this is how exactly the paths are organized and uh, next we need to see the conditions to energize these paths okay so let's look at uh, p1 and p2 the paths which are leading to a multiplexer at the input of alu and these are coming from different stages the control signal we require are forward a and uh, uh, forward b would have similar equations so when is forward a equal to 1 that is a condition when is forward a equal to 2 that is a condition uh, if these conditions do not hold by default we will make sure that forward a has a value 0 okay if none of these holds the value is 0 uh, condition for forward b would be similar but first let us look at this uh, what we are saying here is now again the same notation is used that instruction in exdm uh, basically in the yeah instruction in exdm stage uh, intends to write in the register file okay and it uh, is in intending to write in a register which is not address 0 so we are taking special care of uh, zero register because uh, that does not cause dependency actually we should have made this check in earlier case also when we were specifying hazard condition without forwarding because uh, if one one instruction is writing into zero for whatever reason right or wrong another instruction trying to read from zero there is no dependency because the value is going to be zero so we are uh, checking here that this instruction intends to write it intends to write in a register which has non zero address and that address is matching with rs of the instruction which is currently in the alu stage okay so the instruction from where we are picking up the data obviously that has reached here okay it is this value we are feeding back so instruction here intends to write into some register from where the instruction here intends to read that is what we are checking. Uh, similarly, this is uh, forward a equal to 2 if in dmwb stage the instruction which has even moved further intends to write into non zero register and uh, that matches the destination matches the source here. Also we need to uh, make it 2 when it is not 1. Okay imagine that there are uh, there is some instruction in this stage which is reading from some register where instruction here is trying to write as well as instruction here it is trying to write so so actually uh, we should forward the data from this one because this will be uh, more current value which this is supposed to read okay because if this writes into some register the instruction here will overwrite over that and it is that value which will be latest and should be read by this instruction so so therefore we have uh, introduced this additional uh, check here that uh, this is not matching that means uh, the instruction which is between the two is not intending to write in the same register okay so th uh, th that that is required so that we read the latest value only okay uh, the condition for 
defining forward B will be exactly similar. Uh, all we do is R s is replaced with R t, okay, because forward B is nothing but controlling the multiplexer which is below and uh, here the relevant register field is R t in place of R s, rest of it remains same. So, this was for data forwarding paths P 1 and P 2. For P 3, P 4, we are trying to forward data from W B stage to the D M stage. So, there is a similar condition that instruction in uh, W B stage intends to write into non-zero register and the destination there matches with the instruction in D M stage uh, which actually requires R T register. So, uh, these are the conditions which can be checked by control and uh, take and energize or enable the right forwarding paths. Having done that, now what is still required is uh, that in spite of forwarding, there are cases when uh, null needs to be introduced and let me go back to this case. So, the only uh, time this happens is that uh, the earlier instruction is a load instruction okay, because that is the only one which writes uh, where the result is ready after fourth stage and the following instruction needs uh, the result in the ALU stage. Okay. So, we need to check this condition and we know how to introduce uh, stall cycles, it is only the condition now we need to define freshly. So, stalling condition when data forwarding is happening in the manner we have described, the condition we need to check is that instruction in the RF stage reads from a register in which a load instruction we are not saying any instruction, but specifically a load instruction in ALU stage is going to write. Okay. So, the, the check is happening actually uh, again uh, referring to this diagram, uh, we, we have to check when this load instruction is here only. Okay. It is not that we check when load instruction is reached here, uh, it is uh, still at this stage that load is here and uh, the following instruction is here. Uh, we hold the following instruction at the RF stage for one cycle. So, that will be the effect we will achieve if we check this condition that is uh, we, we are looking at MR signal which is memory read the only instruction which does memory read is load instruction. Okay. So, we are looking at this signal if this signal is active in the instruction which is in EX stage and uh, the, the destination of that matches with either R s or R t of the instruction which is at R s stage. Then we uh, exercise our controls for holding the instruction back by a cycle and introducing a no op. So, so we, we have uh, again uh, same shortcoming is here in the condition that uh, if, if the instruction which is following is a jump instruction we do not want to do all that. Okay. Okay. So, I uh, will uh, summarize at this point, uh, basically we have looked at the data hazards, uh, we analyzed uh, what are the different situations, uh, we saw its effect in two different ways, when we are seeing instruction by instruction how the picture looks like, we notice that instructions are uh, getting introduced, no ops are getting introduced from ALU stage onwards. We also saw in the uh, in the stage view that is you, you look at all the stages and take times uh, time time snaps so uh, in uh, this was seen in two views to get a clarity of the situation and we identified how we going to in, how we are going to introduce uh, stall cycles okay uh, and uh, no ops are inserted the control signal were defined for that then conditions were defined we check the hazard and activate those control signals. Uh, then to improve the performance, we talked about uh, data forwarding paths. Okay, there, there were three types of data forwarding paths, uh, actually four, but two of them we considered together P 1, P 2, P 3, P 4. P 3, P 4 we considered together because we took the value out of after the multiplexing. Okay, so, both got combined and then uh, this requires its own control because there are some multiplexers which need to be activated correctly. Uh, further, there are still situations where stalls are required 
and we defined conditions for introducing stalls and uh, uh, along with the data forwarding. So, so basically the conditions which we developed for stall in the end uh, would be used in place of the condition we developed earlier. Okay. So, if, if you do not have forwarding paths, then there was one set of control conditions. If you have forwarding paths, then uh, you, you need two things, you need uh, control signals to uh, select these multiplexes correctly and also in special cases introduce the stalls. So, uh, if there are any questions, I will take that otherwise we will stop here. No questions? Okay, thank you.